In order to increase its membership base, the BRICS organization invited Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates to join last year. Southeast Asian nations are becoming interested in joining BRICS, Thailand and Malaysia have recently shown their interest in doing so. Thailand filed for membership last month, while Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim stated that his nation will shortly start official proceedings in an interview with the Chinese news outlet Guancha. There is no reason not to join BRICS since it would provide new avenues for commerce and investment. The executive director of the ASEAN Foundation, P.D. Shrizangam, told DW, There are members of the bloc from all around the world, but not yet from Southeast Asia, he continued. As to the findings of Professor James Chin according to the University of Tasmania's Department of Asian Studies, both Thailand and Malaysia are viewed as medium powers. To give them a stronger voice in the global arena, it would be better for them to join organizations like BRICS. However, commerce will be the main advantage, she continued. The organization known by its initials, BRICS, stood for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Last year, the group resolved to invite Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates to join. Although the extended group's name has not yet been revealed, it may go by the moniker BRICS+. Plus. Together, its members make up over 3.5 billion individuals, or around 45% of the world's population. Their respective economies are valued at around $30 trillion, 28 trillion euros, or almost 28% of the world GDP, as per World Bank figures. As per Rahul Mishra, an associate professor at Jawaharlal Nehru University in New Delhi Center for Indo-Pacific Studies, the bloc can help Malaysia's digital economy grow faster by allowing it to integrate with countries that have strong digital markets and also take advantage of best practices from other members, Dhabavu was informed. Thailand would also be able to attract investments in manufacturing, services, and agriculture, among other essential areas, he continued. Experts predict that Malaysia's evolving economy will expand if it joined BRICS. According to Chin, Malaysia and Thailand's decisions to join BRICS were influenced by their existing commercial connections with China. For the last 15 years, China has been Malaysia's biggest commercial partner. Thailand's largest in 11 years based on government figures. According to Chin, these two Southeast Asian countries' membership in BRICS would deepen their connection with China. Chin spoke with DW. Thai Foreign Minister Mira Sang Jimpongsa emphasized last month that his country's entry into BRICS was not seen by Bangkok as a means of choosing sides or as a counterweight to any other group. What sets Thailand apart is that we have friends with every nation and adversaries with none. We can serve as a conduit for developing nations and BRICS nations, Mira stated. In addition to the BRICS, Thailand has submitted an application to become a member of the 38-member, primarily Western Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, which is located in Paris. Petey stated, small and intermediate powers do not have many alternatives. What Thailand is carrying out is a delicate balancing act in which the rising economies are placed alongside Western liberal democracy. An opinion poll conducted recently by the Singaporean think tank ICS Yusof Ishak Institute in Malaysia indicates that public opinion is presently more favorable toward China, the second largest economy in the world after the United States. Almost 75% of those who participated in the study said that if ASEAN had to side with one of the two competing superpowers, it should prefer China over the US. Amor denounced the relentless propaganda that we should cast aspersions and dread the domination of China economically, militarily, and technologically to June, during Chinese Premier Lei Qiang's three-day visit to Malaysia. No, we don't, as we maintain our impartial position, we in Malaysia are determined to cooperate with China and all other nations, he continued. Southeast Asian nations who are interested in joining BRICS are not limited to Malaysia and Thailand. Vietnam's foreign ministry spokeswoman, Pham Thu Hang, stated during a news conference in Hanoi in May that we are actively following the process of BRICS membership growth like many nations across the world. Because Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia already have strong relations to China, India, and Russia, all important BRICS countries, Mishra thinks these countries may be the possible candidates. Johannesburg, South Africa played host to the BRICS summit in 2023. It would be a fantastic chance for Vietnam, which has been seeing large investments to increase commerce outside its conventional markets into the Middle East, Africa, and Latin America, he continued. There had been talk that Indonesia, the only G20 nation in Southeast Asia hoping to finish the OECD accession process within three years, may join BRICS before last year's conference in South Africa.
However, President Joko Widodo of Indonesia finally announced to the populace that his administration had chosen not to submit a letter of interest. At a January news conference, Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi stated that Jakarta was still considering the benefits and drawbacks of joining the BRICS. Before we continue, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so. This will also help you too to know your preferences. Let's continue. According to Prime Minister Datuk Siri Amor Ibrahim, official procedures to join the BRICS would soon start in Malaysia, he stated in an interview with the Shanghai-based news website Guancha. We have chosen the right course of action. We are about to start the official procedure. We are still awaiting the South African government's final decision in response. The discussion of a second wave of expansion coincides with the strengthening of China-Russian bilateral ties as well as those with the Middle East, particularly with Iran, after U.S. sanctions. The BRICS alliance has gained the power of major Gulf economies that produce oil. At least 34 more nations have expressed interest in joining the Union, according to information recently released by South Africa's Minister of International Relations and Cooperation. With Thailand and Malaysia announcing their plans to join BRICS+, Plus, the alliance gained significant traction in the ASEAN area. Indonesia, another ASEAN member, has also expressed interest in joining, although it has addressed the issue in a more casual manner. Cambodia, Vietnam, and the Lao PDR could be prospective candidates in the future. There are rumors that Turkey is considering joining BRICS Plus as well, although this will not be easy to do. The goal of BRICS is to become a forum where developing countries may voice their interests and concerns on the structure and operation of the global financial architecture. The increasing acceptance of BRICS, or more precisely BRICS Plus, is a clear indicator of the breakdowns in the current global order. Examining BRICS through the prism of the US-China-slash-Russia competition may not adequately account for the dynamics that are beginning to emerge. When examining the positions of the BRICS countries on matters concerning international political organizations and global institutions, it becomes clear that their policies, particularly in the area of international financial architecture, positions are in alignment. BRICS not only promotes trading in local currencies among its member states but also discourages commerce in U.S. dollars. It also supports rules-based, open and transparent global trade. This goal is bolstered by its membership growth. This also applies to Saudi Arabia's recent decision to sever a 50-year petrodollar agreement for multi-currency commerce with the U.S. The voices of the Global South are represented by BRICS and BRICS Plus, who have been pushing the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. I am a hath, to implement significant changes and adopt a more inclusive and responsible strategy. Furthermore, BRICS has consistently pushed for thorough reform of the UN Security Council. Council asserting that the interests of the global community are not sufficiently represented by its existing membership arrangement, which gives the five permanent members veto power. It makes sense that Malaysia would want to avoid any negative consequences in light of the intensifying rivalry between the US and China. Many are surprised by Thailand's decision to join BRICS, despite the country being a close and long-standing U.S. partner. It would be deceptive to put too much emphasis on the China factor in this. To start with, even though Malaysia has not said where it stands on the Indo-Pacific, it did sign up for the U.S.-led Indo-Pacific Economic Framework IPEF, long before it showed any interest in the BRICS. In the same way, Thailand's ties with the U.S. and the West have not been getting worse. Thus, BRICS is more about seizing more chances on the international front than belonging to an anti-West slash anti-US group. Any such initiatives, or narratives for that matter, are already diluted by the presence of Saudi Arabia, the UAE, India, and other countries. Member nations of the 42nd ASEAN Summit decided to encourage the use of local currency in commerce. This seems to be the bloc's plan to move away from more traditional currencies like the US dollar. ASEAN nations appear to be ready for any scenario in which commerce is impacted by sanctions as Washington has militarized the US dollar through the increasing use of unilateral penalties. It is also logical that nations feel unsafe when combining robust commerce with China given the ongoing US-China trade conflict and decoupling. With trade reliant on the US currency, their decision to trade in both local and non-US currencies makes sense. To put it another way, de-dollarization is a precautionary step against the possibility that the US will impose more sanctions on its allies and rivals, including China and Russia. Anwar Ibrahim said that Malaysia should consider de-dollarization, and he even supported the idea of an Asian monetary fund. Because of the dollar's role in US-imposed sanctions, countries in Southeast Asia are becoming increasingly apprehensive. There is good justification for these concerns. For example, Western nations and their officials in Malaysia have threatened to impose penalties on Anwar because of his public expression of concern for the Palestinian issue.
The U.S. in December 2023, the Treasury Department penalized four companies with headquarters in Malaysia on the grounds that they had helped Iron manufacture drones. Iron is accused by Washington of supplying deadly drones to Russia for use in Ukraine and to Middle Eastern proxies it alleges are terrorist organizations. Washington placed sanctions on 300 companies last month because of alleged ties to Russian military supply, including the Malaysian semiconductor company Chitronix Stinbud. Amor Ibrahim presented his nation as the perfect, neutral and non-aligned host for semiconductor manufacturers during the U.S.-China tech conflict in a keynote speech at the CEICO and Southeast Asia 2024 tech conference last month. He also stated that his government will want to draw in U.S. $100 billion in new investment. Anwar praised the U.S. as a significant export market and partner for chips produced in Malaysia, but he also emphasized that his administration could not support unilateral measures that would jeopardize the independence of his nation. Economist Jim O'Neill of Goldman Sachs projects that by 2050 the BRICS plus nations will make up around 40% of the world economy. Between 2012 and 2022, the BRICS countries, of which China accounted for almost 25% of the increase, collectively generated more than 45% of the growth in the global GDP. China is seen as a crucial member of the BRICS from the viewpoints of both intra-bloc trade flows and the bloc's foreign policy due to its economic might and expanding influence in world events. Between 2009 and 2023, China has continued to Malaysia's largest trading partner, with total commerce valued at 95.8 billion US dollars. Naturally, Malaysia feels more comfortable given China's leadership in the BRICS. Additionally, Thailand's biggest trading partner is China. The commerce between China and Thailand increased steadily during the previous five years, reaching 135 billion US dollars in 2023. Joining BRICS makes sense from an economic perspective for both Malaysia and Thailand. However, China is not the sole element uniting the BRICS+. Plus. BRICS encompasses much more than just China and Russia. Southeast Asian nations like Malaysia and Thailand are already intricately connected to China through bilateral and ASEAN-led multilateral systems, thus they do not need to interact with China through organizations like BRICS. Thanks for sticking around and see you in the next video.